Robin McCormick, Communications and Marketing Director for the City of Hampton, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Round Robin. Today we're going to be talking about educational opportunities in the city, but these are slightly different educational opportunities. These are classes and workshops that you can take in Hampton to learn more about the city and how it works, to better interact with the city and figure out what services you can use. And also some of the courses are designed to just really enhance your personal interests, make you a better parent, or make you better at some of the things you do. So we call this program Hampton and You. Today here we have to talk about it, Tammy Flynn from our Marketing and Communications Department, and Carol, Carol, say your name for me. Perenzen. Perenzen. <laughs> and Carol is actually our star graduate. Carol, <laughs> tell me the academies that you've been through at the City of Hampton. Okay, I started with the Diversity College, okay. and I took the, um, just the diversity course that you have to take. And then I took the generations that talks about the different generations. And generations is an advanced diversity course. Right. right? And okay. then I took the religion. Oh, one, and that so was three, very interesting. Yes. Three of the diversity classes. You know, a lot of people think that's just race relations. It's not. What, what did you learn in, in those three levels of diversity training? Uh, we learned about the different groups of people and how they interact in like the business world and the regular world. You know, like, um, um, I, you mean in the, the, the generations or the diversity? Either one. To, to something just, interesting. That, you just from learn about all the different types of people and how they interact and how, you know, where it depends on where they come from as to um, how they fit together. You know, you have to have so many people in, you know, do their own part and then they come together as a whole. Mm -hmm. It makes up the fabric of whatever group you're in, whether right, it's an office right. or a volunteer organization. Right. People come from those different age, race, gender. Yeah, and how they all work together mm -hmm. to make a good cohesive group. Good. So you did three levels of diversity. Then yes. what, else, what else did you take? Uh, and then next I took the police academy, the Citizens Police Academy, and we learned all about what the police do to protect our city, you know, all the different aspects. And it was really, I got, I had respect for them, but I have extreme respect for our police department and what they go through because I don't think we really realize. We just know they're out there trying to catch the bad guy, but they do a lot of good for the community too. So you also learn some of the proactive things that they do. Yes, and, and that's why I wanted to take these to learn how my city works and what mm -hmm. exactly they do. Mm -hmm. But the police department just, they're awesome. <laughs> That's great. What else did you take? Uh, then I took, um, I think the next one I took was the court academy. And that I learned all about the different courts and how they, you know, how they run and how they function. And we did a mock trial and that wow. was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, just learn how that whole system works. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting because a lot of times, I mean, you sort of hope that you don't see the inside of a courtroom. Right. And so most of us have a very disconnected, I mean, back when I was a reporter, I covered courts, so uh -huh. I spent a fair amount of time in there, but most people really don't understand how they work or, or no. what goes on. No you, no, you don't. And, you know, you just think, you see the TV version. Right. And that's it's not really <laughs> not what the court system is. And, you know, and they explain the different courts and, what happens in each one and mm -hmm. you know you just think you're going to get a jury trial and sometimes you really want the the judge to make the call for you you know you, you right. learn the different options and right. you know and it, that was just really really interesting mm -hmm. you got to go to the jail too right oh yeah that was that was a scary thing for me <laughs> when they closed the door yeah we did go down to the um, minimum security jail and they took us through and showed us everything down there you know, see, that's pretty cool. You get to really see a different side. Yeah. I mean, you hope you're never in the jail. Most of us hope that. Right. But you get to see it and understand just a tiny bit about what goes on there. I know. And and the court one, too. They sh took us in the holding cell where they put the prisoners and, you know, they actually shut the doors on us. And, you wow. know, you get kind of scared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I never want to be there. But, yeah, that was very interesting to see, and then they took us to Newport News, to the farm, they call it. Right. And showed us that area and explained that, you know, that they have the prisoners go out and do the work in the city to help, you know, let them, the minimum security people. 
So I didn't really realize, you know, that they did go out and work and, right. and help. Right, and our sheriff's department runs a few of those similar programs. Right, in our yeah, that's what I meant. Too, we right. went, I've been, right. went to both of them to, that's you know, to compare them. And so what else have you done? Okay, um, let's see, that was the police, the citizens, went to the Codes Academy. And okay, I, now that one sounds boring. Let me be honest. No, <laughs> that was not boring. That really? was very interesting. It's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of book work and explaining, but you never realize what goes into building a house, all the codes and all the special things that they have to do, and all the, like, you just take it for granted. Like, they all need, have, there's a code that you have to have the, the house number on the house, not the street. So the fire department and the police department can find them. That's, that's how they work together. Yeah, and it has to show up at night. You know, that's an Right, and thing that's too. one thing I, you know, and just all the different regulations and things, you know, about people's yards that have got junk in them. And, you know, these are, there's all codes to take care of them. You don't realize oh, all the rules and do, regulations. Is it interesting? I mean, do you now, like, do you find that you call about things that you see in the city because you know they're code violations or you just want to understand, wanted to understand more? About I wanted to understand the how, yeah, the, how everything fits together. And, you know, I mean, I don't really have a reason to call for those because I don't own a home. But somebody that did, or if, like if you wanted to put a shed up, mm -hmm, that you mm -hmm. have to, you know, get um, permits and all this. Right, and that it's for your safety. I mean, you right. want to make sure that that deck is built to the proper standards, that it's not right. going to collapse. So there's right. a lot of safety and important things that, yeah. it's not just aesthetics. People think, oh, it's just, you know, is your grass too high or, or whatever, and it's not. Oh, no, not. because there's codes on, um, you know, your electricity and, you know, just mm -hmm. everything. And right. you don't really realize all the background stuff that goes on because you just like, you know, move in, pay your rent. And, wow. But okay. if you go to do other things, then okay. you need to know. So what else did you take? Okay, and then I took the, um, the fire academy. I was in the first fire academy and that was so awesome. <laughs> did you get to ride the truck? Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a big attraction for, it was, for people. And we got to, I got to go up in the bucket truck Oh, wow. 120 feet up in the air. I was a little scared, but oh, it was. I've never done that. That was, would be fun. It was. You could see all the way over mm -hmm. to Norfolk to the shipyard. Yeah. And it was just, you know, we, we got to put the fires out with the fire hose. And cool. It was really nice. And I, and, and what I, the best part of that that I thought was you learn how, the, how they work together as a team. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got each other's back. And that's the number one thing is accountability for where the firemen are. Right, right. You know, and just, I don't know, they're just, you know, they were just awesome. <laughs> that is so exciting. Yeah. So is there anything else or is that, that's almost the end of the um, I classes, think those right? are all the ones, oh, the neighborhood college. Oh. Yes, yeah, so we went through the neighborhood college and we learned, you know, about the curb appeals and the, and the, I, di I didn't know that the kids could take, because um, my kids are older now, um, you could graduate with an associate degree from a junior uh, from a college while you're still in high school. Mm -hmm. That was really awesome. Cool. So yeah. you have done all this, and these are programs. And Tammy, I'm asking you some questions from the city side. These are programs that have been around, but this year you've changed in terms of how we communicate the programs to citizens. Do you want to explain that a little mm -hmm. bit? People like Carol, when you came to town, it was, or when you retired, it was probably difficult for you to zero in on one thing or to find that one thing that interests you. This way, it's a one-stop shop. Right. They just go to hampton.gov slash learn, and all of the programs are there. And you picked the learn because I know one of the things that came up in the community plan is citizens came right. forward about w ways to make Hampton the most livable city in Virginia or maybe beyond Virginia. But, but yeah. lifelong learning and educational opportunities came up with the citizens as a huge focus. Mm -hmm. And really, the city's been doing some of it. I just, I just don't know if we've been telling people mm -hmm. in this really um, all put together way. Right, because what each department was doing, it first started with the Neighborhood College, that was the first one, it was mm -hmm. actually the first one in the country, and it was so popular that each department started to do it. Mm -hmm. And so you had all these different departments using many resources, many of the same people, 
And so for example, the city manager would come to each yes. one of these and, and sometimes say some pretty similar things. Right. Or you'd have other people that would be repeat guests. Yeah, so we got all of those folks together, every person that coordinates the curriculum and the Codes Academy, I know you'll be very sad. I know that's going away. <laughs> yeah, well, and it's not going away, it's, it's just restructured. It's right. such, it was eight classes, uh, took a couple months to get through, and so mm -hmm. the idea is you go through Hampton 101 to see all of those things, and then whatever you want to pursue that's really of interest to you, then you can go and take codes workshops. And But you're getting all the basics first. And so, so that was another advantage. So the umbrella program is called? Hampton and You. And that's because the classes and curriculum can teach you about Hampton and also about yourself. And mm -hmm. I think diversity is both. You know, in a lot mm -hmm. of ways, that's a self uh, you learn more about yourself and how you interact, but you also learn how people around you interact and how to interact with them. And the Hampton classes, you know, are more really about the city. The parenting classes, for example, would be more about you. So Hampton and you is the umbrella. And, mm -hmm. and the main course, which used to be the neighborhood college, is called Hampton 101. So it's a little bit like a college style curriculum, but it, of course, mm -hmm. is a, free, which college isn't, and it's a little mm -hmm. less uh, academic, some of it. Mm -hmm. So it's more like, really, a lifelong learning academy or auditing a class or, you know, th something like a high school kind of thing, so. You can build your skills, you can learn about your community, and at the same time, while you're building yourself, you're also building community. You're finding out how to connect to Hampton and all of the resources that you probably wouldn't know about. Mm -hmm. each college that you talked about, you said, well, I didn't know, I didn't know. Well, this way, citizens are happier because they're less confused and they're less uninformed. Yeah, I wanted to say something, too. Okay. One of the reasons that I took the academies is when I, I worked two jobs, so I wasn't able to be involved oh, wow. in my community. Um, but I wanted to see where it is that I could fit in and give back to um, the community mm -hmm. with all the people that had helped me. So by taking all these classes, I zeroed in on helping with the seniors. So tell me just a little bit, you, you retired, and that's sort of what gave you the opportunity to have the time to do right. this. And you wanted to give back, and since you've been doing all these things, you have zeroed in on a particular volunteer community service organization. Right. You wanna tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I, I, I seem to, I always thought I'd work with kids, but it seems to come out to work with seniors and you know things to better better the community and area for seniors. Because I went with the five-year plan for the city of Hampton, <laughs> and we wanted to. Um, what what my goal was when I started is I wanted to get seniors involved and in, included in the city of Hampton mm -hmm. because they didn't seem to be. Um, the child, you know, the children. There's a lot the of future. youth services, that right? We but not that much for seniors, and the seniors are almost a third of the population, and the seniors um, built this city, and we need to take care of them, and we'd like to. Uh, uh, all of us that work with seniors would like to see Hampton become a, a, a retirement magnet for seniors. So we need to get programs out there. So I work with the. The triad with the work with safety issues for seniors and the retired senior citizens volunteers. You know, there's so many seniors that are out in our community that are doing volunteer work right. and helping. And, and there that's are a, seniors that probably have the ability to do volunteer work but just aren't connected. So one of the things you're doing or that Hampton and you would do would be to connect them with each other, to connect them with the city or some organization that might get them fired up. And that, yeah, because the, I think a lot of people think when you're senior, you're disabled and sit home, watch TV, and there's so many of us out there that are involved in our community. And that's, and now um, I'm on the Senior Citizens Advisory Council, and that's one of the things that we're working on this year. We're coming out with a newsletter um, starting in April to seniors to let them know activities in the area, resources where they can find, you know, classes to go to, if they need help with something, you know, anything to help the seniors. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to get computers put in the senior center so that the seniors have that capability to go and look for resources. 
Well, and I community. think, you know, one of the things the city maybe could do better is to market and communicate the senior resources, because we do a pretty good job with youth, but a lot of the things mm -hmm. that are available for seniors are really also available for the general population, mm -hmm. and we just may not be getting that information right. that's to people in a really effective way. So right. thank you for that, yeah, that that's idea. Yeah, that's why we were trying to get that newsletter. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. appreciate all that you do on behalf of the city and on behalf of the groups you work with. Is there anything either of you wants to add before we wrap up? We do have the next Fire Academy coming up in April, and so you can register for that now online. Also, the last time that we had the Neighborhood College before the 101 and before we started packaging this to give you an example of the impact and how powerful it is to do it this way, is there were 10 people that registered in the last class. Because and that of was the a limited year ago, that last spring or yeah, something, right? Yeah, they don't okay. have each of but together we all have more and we had 65 people wow. apply, register for that class and so we have a wait list for fall. So you can go on and register for Hampton 101, that read the overview of all of the opportunities that are available but then there are single workshops for your specific interest too. Okay. It's very easy. And Hampton 101 again is that introductory course mm -hmm. It tells you all about the city departments and Tammy doesn't it end in a, a tour of the city? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you take people um, and show them some areas and you have experts really talking about those neighborhoods or those city projects or you know what's going on in the city. I think it's probably different every time that, that mm -hmm. the tour happens. But. And it's a way they've never seen it because they have new eyes, they know what's going on behind the scenes and so we can actually show them this is what we were talking about, but mm -hmm. also history and mm -hmm. fun things to do that you can't really cover in the class. So, Well that's great and again that web address is Hampton.gov slash learn. Or people without web access can also call 311 mm -hmm. and find out what is being, what we're registering for now and mm -hmm. what's upcoming or, or to get more information. Exactly. And there's also all the recreational opportunities and the public library opportunities there as well. That's right. All part of lifelong learning. Okay. Well, we'll have uh, discussions about those on future episodes of Round Robin. But I want to thank you, Tammy and Carol, for coming by today and sharing this information with our audience. Audience, and I want to thank you for tuning in to Round Robin, and I hope you'll come back for the next episode. Thank you. Mm -hmm.